I think this is the public hearing for the Board of Finance for the budget, March 2nd, 2022. We have our Board of Finance members that are here, Bill Moore, McPherson, Justin Murphy, Katie Stein, the one at the end is not on the Board of Finance. <laughs> also, Vice Chair Dean Fitzgerald, our show will be here, and Cindy Breckenheim. So it's a great board. They really care about the town of Madison. And they work very well together. We don't always agree, but we work very well together doing what we think is best for this for the town of Madison. Just the budget process in general it really begins in September with the town and the education offices coming together. Uh, the board helps the budgets throughout the fall. And then it opens in January with a combined board of selectmen and board of finance meeting with the town staff. After that, there's a combined board of selectmen, board of finance, and board of ed meeting for the education budget. And the process, as you can see, up until now, the board of ed has approved the board of education, has been approved by the board of education and the board of selectmen. The town budget has been approved by the board of selectmen. And tonight, the board of finance receives both, the rec both of the recommended budgets. Before I go any further, I really want to thank Stacey Novitz and her finance team. They make our job so easy, so much easier. I don't want to say it's easy, Stacey, but so much easier. They're really dedicated. They care. Uh, how about standing up or just something? Thank you. Thank you. Do a fantastic job, and it's, uh, it's a big, big help. As I said, we're receiving both Board of Education and the Board of Selectors and uh, the recommended budget. We really want to hear from the public. We want to hear from you. You have a major role in this. So it's extremely important to give us your feedback. So please come to our meetings, our workshops. You can email us. Let us know your thoughts. So what comes next? The Board of Finance will have budget workshops for the next month plus. The Board of Finance will have a their second public hearing on April 25th, obviously 2022. The Board of Finance will do the recommended budget for fiscal 23. The referendum will be May 17th, and the Board of Finance will set the mill rate after that on May 18th. Shortly, we were going to hear from our Board of Education Superintendent, Dr. Cook, who will get up and uh, walk us through the Board of Education budget, followed by our first selected Peggy Lyons. And then there'll be questions and comments from the public. And we ask you to keep those comments around two minutes so we can make sure everybody gets a chance to speak and gets their input. And just one more reminder that this will be an ongoing process, so please get involved, give us your thoughts, give us your questions. We're going to do our best for all of you. Dr. Cook, are you ready? Thank you, Mr. Picard, and thank you to the Board of Finance and uh, our citizens at home for the opportunity to present tonight. Um, as was here, what you see tonight represents a lot of work that started in the district really over the summer. A lot of work starts in, in September when our staff come back, and it also represents input from staff throughout the entire district. And so when we start in our, our schools in September and receive input at the yeah. principal level, yeah. Yes. Okay. I haven't, I haven't got any start. Let's <laughs> make sure we do it right. Um, but um, we will get to. We do a lot of work to get to this point, and we have uh, uh, made reductions along the way. One of the things that I think is important to do for. Um, a budget is to have each building bring forward needs that they have, needs from the staff. 
at the at the budget level, at the, at the district level, and then we we go through those line by line and, and really make uh, you know, some difficult decisions. So what you see tonight represents a lot of consensus that came about to get to this point. We um, keep our mission in mind as we make any budget presentation, any work around the budget, because of the budget really is the um, strategic plan for the district in so many ways. What gets funded gets done. You know, it's something we always talk about during the budget process. So every child, every day leading the way, I hope you'll see that and recognize that as we go through this. In terms of the, the budget itself, it is a 1.66%. This is um, typically below average of what we see in Connecticut. Um, as we looked last year, it's about 2% is the average throughout um, districts in, in Connecticut. Um, we're, we're a district that does not see a lot of grant funds. So this is, uh, you know, the, the main uh, part of what funds our, our, our budget, our, our um, district. And as you see, most of the, you know, most of the money goes towards personnel. You know, education is a people business, and that is uh, reflected in our, in our budget. As we go through here, we look at each each category, and we'll get into greater detail as we, as I go forward. You know, as, as I mentioned, there are reductions, there are additions when when we go through any budget. And I want to um, share kind of the high level of that in terms of the operating budget. The operating budget is uh, uh, our biggest portion; it's one point four two percent of our overall overall budget. Our contractual increases. Net of, net of grant savings uh, is 740,000. And that um, is a number that starts much higher. You know, our, our one contract or teacher's contract alone would be higher than this, this number. But as we see retirements, as we see resignations, as we make changes, that reduces that. And so we were able to take advantage of those, um, that, that turnover, those retirements as we hire new staff into our organization. We also have eliminated seven positions as we as we got to that point that were funded through the budget. So seven paraprofessional positions that were part of our, our district have been eliminated for, for next year, five of which are reflected in um, classroom um, support positions and two of which are um, positions that also are part of two classroom reduction positions. So we have two positions right now in our organization that are funded through a grant that will not be continued next year. They are placed towards kindergarten to ensure we have low kindergarten class sizes. We'd love to continue those positions, but they were um, grant funded. Also net early retirement savings, this does not reflect a new retirement, early retirement program. This is a, um, the lapsing of a program that had been done previously. So those are, our savings um, for our organization that we capture. We have the continuation of building-based substitutes, which is something that started during COVID times and that uh, reflects a, a consistent person going into the buildings each day and being the substitute teacher. It has been a better model. It was reduced as part of uh, last year's budget um, and we're putting that back in this year. We're very excited to restart our curriculum writing process. That has been something that has been on hold during uh, during COVID times. And so as we get into next year, that's very important for us to have an uh, updated viable curriculum in each and every area within our district. And so we'll have Madison teachers writing curriculum alongside administrators this, this summer. We also have some personnel budget um, related requests, a math coach which would bring our um, math coach, um, which is support for teachers in the classroom, up to three coaches. We currently have two. We have four for language arts. So it's something that we're on that continual basis um, to, uh, to bring our math coaches in line with that same staffing. We also will bring um, advanced placement testing support at the high school. This is really looks to be a pilot program for next year as we uh, look to support our students as they take advanced placement um, tests. This is really about having more students take more advanced place, uh, placement courses. And we'd like to see each, each student at, at um, and high school take a, take an AP class during their time at, uh, at the high school. And we know we need to give them supports on that. Advisory co-coordinators is really a social emotional learning um, initiative for our, our district and to ensure that all students at, at and receive that support. And then as typically any year, we're going to see an increase in benefits. Um, we'll talk about health insurance later, but these are more pension costs and payroll taxes and other insurances. 
really a bright spot in the budget over the past few years has been the health insurance increases through contractual negotiations, through reduced employee account, through healthy employees. We've seen a low um, in health insurance cost last year, it was 0%. So this is a, an increase for us, but it's really well below the stand, standard in the industry. We see many districts that see in the 10% increase in this, this uh, lineup. So we're thrilled to, again, return a, um, a minor increase in health insurance. In terms of special ed, again, another uh, bright spot. You know, a lot of work goes into this. We program for our, our, our students and oftentimes we'll have, you know, maybe a larger class that is, is graduating or leaving us. Um, this reflects that down to a, uh, an individual student level that we have, have budgeted for. External placements, this is an account that um, could see huge jumps, huge variations year to year. Um, this is a very minor increase for, for us in, in the grand scheme of things. Um, that could reflect one more student in our district that has to be outplaced. Um, so that's a lot of work through our special education staff, our special education leadership to make sure that we keep as many students in Madison as we can. Um, always account adjustments here, a decrease in transportation, a small increase in uh, ESS contractual increases at the middle school and high school. Um, we are filling a line item that has not um, brought in, it, in the money it used to, which is tuition for uh, uh, typical students at the preschool program, and then a miscellaneous account that reflects a number of uh, accounts in special education that will um, go up slightly each one. In terms of curriculum and instruction, you know, that is uh, um, one of the big drivers is for uh, curriculum instruction is the math coach being, being added, but as I mentioned, it's very important for us to get back to writing curriculum on a um, regular basis. We have um, accreditation process at our high school coming in this, this fall. So a lot of our work has been gearing up for that, uh, that date. Um, accreditation obviously is very important to us in, in Madison at, you know, in high school. We don't anticipate any issues. Certainly our, our, our high school is a very high performing high school and, and do not see concerns. We need to make sure we have updated curriculum in each area. And they will be certainly monitoring that as they come through. Um, so it's very important we get back to our regular and, and then even then some, you know, uh, process for working curriculum. We also have an additional staff development day next year. And so the $15,500 covers the cost of that additional day to do uh, staff development for, for teachers, and, uh, uh, administrators and staff. In terms of facilities, we have put forward a $30,000 uh, increase for plan and cycle maintenance. That is really the funds that do all the, the, the minor work that we do across the district, painting, um, repairs. You know, uh, we had a, a small leak at uh, Jeffrey Elementary School this year. That's the money that we use to fund those types of repairs. So $30,000 really is just keeping us up with the increased amount of costs that we're seeing as, you know, you have seen in your houses, we've seen, you know, very clearly in the, in the district that there's a, a you know, lengthier time to order supplies and cost, lengthier costs um, as well. We have many uh, long-term additional maintenance needs to, to do. Um, through the work of, of Bill and his staff, we've been able to keep utilities down. A 2% increase is, is really reflects a lot of our, our work. We've added solar panels. You know, you see out in the uh, uh, parking lots have helped us in that. That run, we've done a lot of work you know, replacing like bowls with LEDs and uh, Done, done a lot of work to keep that increase as, as low as possible. In terms of the um, other operating costs, technology, we invested heavily in technology last year. We are um, not needing to increase that for, for this year. And so there's no change in the technology budget. budget. We have been, we have not stood still by any means So We have added security cameras throughout the district. We just recently were able to add $60,000 to two grants through the state. We had additional Promethean boards throughout the district and we believe we'll be pretty close to the point where every classroom in the district has an uh, updated Promethean board um, by the start of school next year. Very long lead times and orders for, for those where we might be there at once, but that was a combination of uh, budget support last year and then also grants to the state extent. 
in terms of where we've been as a um, on our budget for the uh, um, past six years, you know, really have have held the line. As you see see there, we have you know decreased um, from previous years that were of the three and four percent range. You know, been in the two percent range, which was uh, about average again at that time. And now we have been below average for the, at the state level for the last four years, below average for our peers. Some of that certainly reflects reductions we have been able to make during, due to declining enrollment. Our projections at this point are that the enrollment will, put, will stay pretty steady and start to increase. So we were not able to um, take advantage of any declining enrollment in terms of the budget. We wanna see our student uh, population you know, certainly come back and, and uh, continue to increase as, as we expect to, to see over the next uh, 10 years. So we're excited about that. But as I, as I mentioned and, and shared, we're at 1.66 percent. Um, that does reflect a lot of work from the Board of Education. We thank the Board of Education for the for the support. They made some reductions in the administrator's budget. We thank the Board of uh, Selectmen for their support with our, our budget as well. We're here to answer questions tonight. I'm not sure if I turn it back to uh, Mr. McCarty. Right? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Cook. As I said earlier, there was a presentation by the superintendent of the board of education in, in conjunction with the board of selectmen the board of finance and I, I just want to thank the, the board of ed and dr cook and, and the finance team for really addressing the needs of our students and our teachers by also being very mindful of our taxpayers so thank you now i'd like to have our first selectman peggy lines come up and take us through the town budget please Peggy. Sure, thank you okay All right, well, uh, thank you uh, everybody for joining us tonight. I'm Peggy Lyons, the first selectman. Oh, yes, Riz. Now, can I, you can move this, right? You don't need this microphone, just that, That's a little better. Yeah. All right, well, great. Well, welcome everybody. I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about the uh, uh, town of Madison budget, which the board of selectmen approved. Um, just a uh, Monday night, um, a recommended budget. So I want to welcome my fellow selectmen here. We have Bruce Wilson, Scott Murphy, uh, Al Goldberg, and um, I think Noreen might be attending uh, virtually with us tonight. So, but thank you. We worked very hard on this. We had several budget workshops. And just so you understand, the budgeting process for the town actually starts in July. We enter our first fiscal year, our new fiscal year, July 1, and we start focusing on the capital budget. So we have a capital budget and then we have an operating budget. Um, and so it's a very long process. And so the town staff worked very hard all year, always thinking ahead and planning for the future. Uh, so a lot of hard work went into that. Um, always trying to keep some goals in mind. Um, and I think the board always tries to um, be uh, very conscious of what the community is looking for. And coming out of COVID, I know there was a lot of focus on public safety this last year, and you'll see that this budget reflects that, that we want to continue and invest and improve public safety as well as support our health uh, department. Um, so that you'll see things like that in, in this year's uh, recommended budget. Um, in addition, um, we obviously had some um, approvals happen on February 15th, so the town is really excited about that. But I think all of us are very mindful that, you know, over the next couple of years, um, we're going to be taking on additional debt, um, and that's going to put pressure on the budget. And I think um, this board um, is very aware of that, and, and we're going to be always looking to the future when that debt service is going to start impacting our budget. So we're going to do a lot of planning and belt tightening a little bit and trying to maintain things and look, uh, think about things in a little different way, since we know that we're going to have uh, with the school renewal plan as well as academy coming on board um, over the next couple of years so that was very much in the back of our minds as we went through our budget this year um, the other the good thing is that you know the um, where we are right now is there are a lot of um, funding out there for projects um, for our capital plan um, outside of just taxpayer money so the the town is taking a very strong position of going after as many grant opportunities as possible and then in addition to that um, we received um, $5.3 million in uh, funding from the American Rescue Plan. So we've been trying to strategically use uh, some of these grant funding that the town has received and then uh, with an eye towards other funding sources to pay for some of these capital projects so they get out of the taxpayer bill 
and we can continue to invest in things, but not have it be reflected in the budget. So that's been a strategic thing. And you'll see we're actually putting some more resources in that to have some of the staff focus on grants. Um, and, um, and there's a lot more detail on these uh, projects. If you look at the state of the town address that I gave last month, and it talks a lot about these projects and um, infrastructure needs and kind of what our priorities are. We're also looking at always to kind of um, look at our organization and try to make things more efficient. We're going through another uh, reorganization uh, this year where we're going to try to once again improve operational efficiency to create kind of break the silos down. We have 15 different departments in town and we're trying to consolidate a little bit so that uh, you know, uh, departments work close, more closely together but share resources too. And so you'll see some of that in this budget also and some of the staffing decisions that have been made. Um, and then, you know, funding the capital improvement program, um, we're looking at ways to maybe front load some of that funding now so that we can kind of um, take away the pressure in future budgets when that debt service comes on. So um, that's some of the things that are included in this budget. And then always, we're always looking to keep uh, the mill rate predictable and as low as an increase in possible every year so that it doesn't hit the taxpayer too hard. So that's the, uh, what our goals are when we were going through this. Um, so the recommended budget that we put in place um, is um, an overall uh, town budget increase of 5%, but you look at the operating budget, which is really um, something I want to highlight. We've made, uh, we've really, uh, this is the first time in a while that uh, the town operating budget is growing at less than a million dollars. Um, we had over, I think, $575,000 of budget requests from the staff. And we really took a hard look at those requests and we only really uh, approved half of those. Um, trying to be mindful once again, because once you add something to the budget, it's very, very difficult to take it out of the budget. So uh, we're trying to focus on just slowing the growth of uh, our, our cost base. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit more in detail about the capital budget and you'll see that's the largest increase here. Um, uh, last year, the Board of Finance opted not to increase the capital budget at all, and I think we want to now kind of jumpstart that program knowing that we have the referendums have passed, um, so we've um, added additional uh, funding into that account, and I'll talk more about that later. Um, so the combined um, overall with the Board of Education would be 2.8% uh, increase. Um, and then we put in kind of an estimated mill rate, obviously the Board of Finance is the one that will make this decision. but. If um, our board felt that if you apply uh, some of our undesignated fund balance again, like we've done over the last two years, um, it allows for a very modest mill rate increase that's actually um, lower than kind of historic uh, mill rate growth. So, and this just gives you kind of a longer term view. And I want to highlight again that we're slowing the growth of the town operating budget. Um, just a couple of years ago, the town operating budget grew at 7%. We managed to cut that growth in half. So, It'd be great to get even further down, and uh, and we're going to keep focusing on that efficiencies, managing our staff better, um, and and really targeting areas where we want to put money in, and and um, and resources that the community wants us to invest in. Um, uh, and then I just also want to highlight once again the mill rate growth because um, I think you know people get concerned when they see these budgets, but understanding that the mill rate is driven also by the growth of the grant list. Um, and a number of other revenue factors um, and the fund balance. So there are other things that go into that calculation. So budget growth doesn't immediately drop down to mill rate growth. So I just want to make that point again. And we talked a lot about that when we talked about the referendums. Um, so what's driving that? Um, so if you look at the overall town budget, including capital, 37% uh, of that is because of the, what we've done, to, what we're recommending that the town do for the capital budget. Um, but then a large chunk of this is um, uh, in our fixed cost base with staff. Um, so um, almost half of this uh, growth is driven by salaries and benefits um, for staff. And um, of that 47%, half of that amount um, is actually driven by public safety. And I'll talk about that in the next slide, but we have made a big investment in our police. We um, gave a very attractive contract for our police department last year to continue to retain and incentivize our officers and also make us in line in, with other communities so that the pay structure was uh, where it should be because we were not um, where we should be. And then we've also now uh, are recommending adding uh, additional personnel. So this is a big investment in our public safety. Uh, and then the other thing is an investment in, in capital funding. 
And just to dig down a little bit deeper, um, just to kind of do a little walkthrough, you'll see that out of this, you know, $342,000 is either the, uh, the contractual for the police department for the existing uh, um, contracts, and then um, um, the addition of two new officers. So we're recommending two new officers to our police department. These would be patrol officers. Um, and then there's other uh, increases, including contractual for other unionized uh, departments, uh, public works and building and grounds, and then our unaffiliated workers, um, as those people's salaries go through adjustments and there's a full adjustment in that. And so that's kind of what's driving most of this. Um, I will point out um, the public schools uh, service element because of the sale of Island Avenue, as we talked about, um, the town was able to offset those uh, transportation costs and nursing costs with revenue that came in from the leasing, uh, from the lease of the property. Now that the lease goes away and we did $2.3 million in the sale, we're going back to what we had in previous years, which we had to pay the transportation, you know, we had to reflect it in the budget. So you would have seen these kinds of numbers five years ago because there, oh, there was a, a, another private school, uh, our Lady of Mercy School, when that closed, and then um, now we're taking on those costs because of OLM prep, um, but we had a revenue offset with the lease and now we don't have that. So this will be kind of a, a year to absorb it into the budget so we won't see such a big jump next year because it'll be just part of the budget going forward. Um, staffing, um, you know, we've made some adjustments, we've added some staff, but in order to do that, like we did last year, we've also tried to reduce staff as well or reallocate staff. So, um, so the real true increase, if you look at this, is really in the police department, um, with two, there's no offsets to that. These are just two new officers that we're going to bring in. Um, and uh, we've shifted around some resources. Health department is taking on uh, an administrative position that they had previously. We had a retirement, it was a full-time position. Now it's going down to a half-time position. Last year, we funded that through ARPA because it was uh, COVID, really a lot of their focus was on COVID. This year we're absorbing that into the budget. The Slackman's office is now we're transitioning actually and promoting a staff member to who's going to be spending half of their time now in the finance department focusing on grants. Um, so we're going to replace, you know, have a new administrative person, but then we're going to have somebody focusing a lot of their time in grants. Um, and then we've had some reductions. We actually eliminated the position in the finance department um, uh, through some efficiencies. So that job was kind of absorbed by another individual in the department. And then we have another retirement of somebody who's, uh, Scott Erskine, who's will no longer be with the town of Madison starting July 1st. He was with us for a, kind of a, on a part-time transitional basis this last year. So, so those are the staffing changes. Um, and then I talked a lot about capital. This is our overall um, CIP plan, um, which was recommended uh, to us by the uh, CIP committee. And I want to highlight a couple things that this includes projects that we pulled out that we're going to be funding by ARPA. There's about roughly two, two and a half million of projects that we were able to fund outside of the capital plan. Um, so that's a great help. And we're going to try to find more of those with some of these other grant opportunities. Um, but then in addition to that, um, you know, so overall the CIP uh, committee recommended, and you can see that on the capital non-recurring line, uh, an additional increase of roughly $250 million or $275,000. Uh, um, but our board, what we'd like to do is start building a little bit of a savings account for the future. Um, because we know we have all these needs, these capital needs. So let's start kind of swirling more, more money away now where we can afford it in the budget so that um, in future years, we may not have to increase that capital account so much when we have debt service coming in. So that's what the 275 and additional funding is down there. And that's a recommendation um, that uh, the board selectman is making and that'll be a decision and discussion having to talk more about that. I know, um, you know, we could even double that number and try to help for the future even more, uh, but obviously that has an impact on, on the mill rate. So that'll be a big conversation, I think, um, that. Um, I'm happy to share some additional thoughts with the Board of Finance, and I know you guys have an active discussion on that. Um, in terms of projects, obviously, um, talk a lot about this at the uh, uh, State of the Town meeting. Um, you know, at the time we didn't know, but now we do know we have these uh, three referendums successfully cast and were approved by Madison voters. So we know we're moving forward on those. We just started establishing building committees. Um, and we're, you know, uh, sprinting out the door to get these things up and running as quickly as possible. Um, we're also launching master planning process for the surf club, and that will be a long-term plan that we'll be working on over the next 
several years of all the community input so that we can you know make some decisions on the surf club and look toward the longer term strategy for that facility downtown center project um uh, we actually are looking, I think, to launch the uh, RFP in April, hopefully, to get um, the work started that would start like in the summer in terms of the electrical work to get those poles down downtown. Um, we've, last year, we put a lot of money in the town fleet, and so we're starting to see some of those new trucks. I think we've got two now that came in um, uh, in our public works department, so you'll see them uh, around town. And we're also looking at uh, converting some of our vehicles and our vehicle uh, plan to electric. There's a lot of uh, grant opportunities out there right now um, uh, to pay for electric cars. And so we're thinking if we could earmark some of our fleet, pay for it somewhere else, it just saves us some more money. And we're also doing the right thing and helping our planet uh, by converting to electric. Uh, the town emergency shelter, um, this is one where there was a lot of work done. I know members of the Board of Finance sat on this committee. Um, we have an inadequate shelter right now that is our town campus gym. Um, and so they've identified uh, Polson as being in the long run, uh, probably the more appropriate facility to host a town shelter, emergency shelter. Um, and so we're putting, uh, you know, more details on that because we would need data generator make some improvements. And we're looking at, at that project relative to a lot of the electrical HVAC improvement work that's going on in the Tolson school plan. So we're trying to see if we can kind of find some funding sources for that to try to make sure that happens efficiently um, at the same time as we do the improvements here at Tolson. Um, and then, you know, there's other projects that we really, it was hard for the planning process because you didn't know if you were going to have academy pass and the school renewal plan pass. So next year it's going to be a lot easier because we're going to have an opportunity to really know what our um, future uh, obligations are going to be from a capital standpoint so we can prioritize other projects better. But I think we did a good job kind of making sure we got things done that had to get done. And that was really what our objective was. So um, I just put in here some other special appropriations our board discussed. Um, we didn't take any action on these, but I'm laying them as a flag for the Board of Finance to maybe have more conversations. Although we did, I think the, I can't remember if we actually voted on this or not, the radar signs. Uh, the, the police department, I know the speed, speeding has been an issue. I get tons of complaints <laughs> from the public about speeding, the MPB does too. And these radar signs um, have been invaluable and they've been a big help um, to controlling speeding. Um, and so they had and maybe it was a budget request. To me, that's a one-time investment. So our recommendation was to pull it out of the budget and pay for it through a special appropriation. Um, and then I'd like to actually put some more money in the planning reserve um, through special appropriation rather than building it to the budget because the next year or two, as we go after grants, it takes money to go after grants. You've got to hire consultants, engineers, get design plans. And so I want to beef up that planning reserve a little bit more so we have some extra funds available to go after grants. And then major roads is another thing we did this last year. We did an infusion through a special appropriation. Um, we have all these bridge projects going on. What happens is we kind of uh, keep our, um, our, uh, uh, our road paving, road work accounts steady. And um, when you have bridges going on, it takes a lot of resources away and then we can't do as much paving. So I'd love to still keep the paving program going so we don't get behind, and that would require uh, a special appropriation into that paving account. So that's something we'll talk more about our, our board as well, and perhaps bring another recommendation to your board on that. Um, but it was something we, we talked a bit about, but we didn't quite get to it in our final deliberation. So, um, so with that, I just want to highlight once again, um, you know, we put together, I think overall the towns, uh, total budget increase um, would be about 2.8%. Um, and given the fact that um, we've been very fortunate, we have had a, 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 a exceptional growth in the grants over 2%, which is uh, significant compared to uh, the past years, that's going to do a lot in terms of offsetting um, some of the uh, mill rate. Um, and so with that, you know, any budget increases, uh, you know, um, should translate into a significant mill rate increase. And so the one that we're recommending would result in a 1.35% uh, change to the mill rate. Um, and that's obviously where finance's job to make those decisions, but we thought we'd just give you some suggestions on that. So, <laughs> um, so with that, I think, um, you know, happy to answer any questions.
about the budget or work. There's a lot of detail on this available on the website. Um, we've got a huge binder that backs up a lot of this information. Um, and I know the Board of Finance members um, you know, have taken a deep dive into a lot of this, and I'm sure there'll be some questions once you guys have a chance to have your workshops. But um, with that, I guess I turn it back over to you. <laughs> Thank you, Peggy Lyons and the entire board of selecting did an excellent job. I do want to just read the uh, thank the board of finance again. I know we have our workshops coming and we're going to have a number of meetings and go through this in its entirety, but Katie signs in, in the back. Uh, thank you, Katie. I, you know, Justin Murphy and Fillmore McPherson. Fillmore needs no introduction. And Cindy Breckenheimer in the vice chair has been very helpful, Chief. It's I want to thank them for all the help they've already given, but all the work we're going to do going forward. So right now I'm going to open this up for questions or comments from the public. Uh, please try to keep the comments around two minutes. Anybody from the public who would like to speak? Um, sir, you want the microphone? Name and address, please. Thank you. Thank you. Dennis Crow, 141 Twilight Drive. Just working. Yeah, push the push the on button. Yeah, might Sorry. Um, I want to thank everybody for what's obviously a, a, a an excellent job keeping the budget down. I see what we some questions to add. But one of the things that um, concerns me is uh, if we look into electric vehicles, but we haven't really figured out the charging that's the end. Do you have capital in there for uh, putting in charging stations? And has anybody thought about queuing theory? It's you know, a mathematical approach to how long you get that vehicle's offline and who's next in line to get charged and things like that, especially if there's overnight. It's like, Issue it's it's a it's a big issue when you have all those new vehicles you need to get them charged overnight. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Um, yeah, happy to talk to that. Um, we have been spending quite a bit of time on this. Um, we have to do a presentation to the board of select, and we'll start the process of looking into this. So we have a working group um, uh, in terms of the infrastructure. One of the things is a grant came up. And it was a very generous grant that would pay for a lot of the infrastructure. So we're trying to figure that out, um, where we would put the stations. The other issue is a lot of fleet vehicles that the town would use, it's just not appropriate vehicles, electric vehicles that would serve those purposes. So, um, so you can't have a, you know, a plow, a snow plow or whatever. Right now, it's just not there. So, but there are some, um, you know, that the assessor's office uses or the health department. Or, you know, there are some other vehicles that we could try to target. Um, so, and we have to kind of make our, we're trying to figure out what our objectives here, serving municipal fleets or is it serve the public? And I think right now the market's trying to figure that out, right? Because the town has chargers downtown, but over time, are people, you know, are, are municipalities expected to provide charging locations? We don't provide gas stations to people with their vehicles, right? So eventually the private sector is going to take over a lot of that. So I think we want to encourage the behavior, which is what we've been doing, and we're going to try to get more chargers in different locations around town. But really the objective is more to compare us, the town, the municipality, to have the resources it needs so we can um, do that conversion and keep converting as the appropriate vehicles come online. So we are thinking hard about it. And we actually had a consultant look at our fleet. He he's said that we're going to probably present that report next month. Um, and we're just trying to be ready and make sure that we have everything we need so we can start applying for grants. So. Thank you, Peggy. Thank you, Dennis. Anybody else from the public who would like to ask a question, make a comment? Second, anybody virtually? 
I don't see any hands raised as of now. Second time, anybody from the public would like to speak? Third and final time, public information session is now closed. Thank you. Thank you everyone for being here. Thank you for asking the questions. Thanks, <laughs> 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 Have a good night, everybody. <laughs>